Hello and welcome to Model Train Fun. Today we are going to look at the uh, M84 decoder. So uh, that's the one I got here. So the M84 decoder is really good uh, for controlling light on your layout, uh, to be able to uh, turn it on and off uh, track power, uh, and you can also use it uh, for signals. However, in truth, it's a very versatile device and you can use it for many things. Uh, the uh, M84 comes in uh, two editions. This one is the uh, 60842, so this is the black edition, this is the newest edition. It's also, uh, it also exists in a 60841, uh, which is white, which is the white edition. The big difference between those two is the black edition, which is the newest one, uh, supports MFX, uh, Macklin Motorola, and DCC. Uh, the white edition does not support MFX and only supports the um, Macklin Motorola and the DCC. However, almost everything is the same for the two devices. You install them the same way and so on. The only thing you have to remember is where on the black edition you can send a blank address and the central station tree will automatically make one. For the uh, white edition you have to set the address on the dip switch. Now there's actually one more uh, difference between these two. So normally I found uh, between the white edition and the black editions they are pretty much similar. However, there's one uh, cool thing about the black edition. It actually has different modes. So it's actually uh, easier for, for you to change this one such that it will work uh, in a different way. Uh, it's a little more cumbersome uh, for the uh, white edition. However, I will also show you here in the video how to do that. Uh, do uh, remember, as always, when you're installing them, it has to be with power off. Okay, so the main topic in this video is really the installation of the M84. However, uh, in order to actually have something fun to do with it, I'm also uh, adding some lights to it. So I'm adding uh, some Fala lights here. So that's the Fala 180110, uh, which uses a 12 volt uh, DC uh, as power. So we'll see that be added on there and how we can control the lights. And the other one uh, I got here is a clock uh, from Feastman. So that's a 5080. And the clock will actually light when you uh, give it power. This one is a little more versatile, so it can use both DC power, AC power, and track power. However, I will show how to use uh, AC power with this one. In this way, we can see how two completely independent uh, power sources can be connected to one M84, and you can actually control it. So do remember, no power on when you're doing the installation. Read the manual and read the safety instructions as well for all the devices you are connecting. Enjoy the video. Let's start by looking at uh, what's in the box. So here we have the 60842. Uh, so this is the new uh, M84. So this is the black one. This is the one that supports uh, MFX. Let's uh, open it up. So what do we have in the box? Uh, the first thing we have here is the uh, warranty card. Always good to have. We got the uh, manual here for the 60842 in Spanish, Italian, Swedish and Danish. We got another manual here. German, English, Finnish and Dutch. Excellent. Cool. Um, and then we have uh, the device itself. So we have the device here. And uh, if we look at it, it kind of looks a little like the uh, M83, but then again, not. Uh, so what do we have? Down here, we got uh, screw terminals uh, for the connectors. You see uh, one through four. And then here at the end, we got the uh, power. If we look at the screw terminals here it's got um, it's got three entries so it's got red a center and then a green here uh, if we look at it down here um, where on the uh, m83 
Uh, these connectors were actually powered uh, from the power to the device. That's actually not true for the M84. So each of these are actually a set of relays and each of them are independent in groups. So you see there's actually, if you look at it, there's uh, four connectors. So it's four times two relays here and they're completely independent of each other. The way they work is you put power on the center and then depending on whether or not the red or the green is turned on, then the power will go to either one side or the other. So you could have here a DC power for light, uh, let's say a 12 volt uh, DC power. You could over here have AC power for uh, another set of lights that require different powers. So this could be a 16 volt uh, AC power, for example. And then you could use another one, for example, for track power and using it uh, for different things. So in this way, each connector here is uh, completely different. If we uh, look down here below, you see there's some extra tabs here and they actually belong two or two to each connector. So this connector here has these two tabs um, and this connector has these two and so on. If we turn these around, you can see they are actually uh, connectors as well. These connectors are for the uh, Märklin uh, hobby light signals. Uh, so you can actually put a um, signal on here and then a distance signal on here as well. Um, however, uh, if you are not using the Märklin ones, you will actually not use these. Because in truth, these uh, connectors that are down here are just extensions on what is uh, up here in a smart way. Okay, what else do we have on here? Uh, we got the uh, address dip switch up here. Then we got a set of connectors up here. They are actually very interesting. You can use these to actually uh, turn on uh, the items down here as well. So if you give power to number one here, it will actually turn on the red on number one. Number two up here will turn on the green uh, on number one and so on. So you can use this either for connecting circuit tracks, read switches, or even having a manual switch as well that could override uh, what you do with the decoder. As a final thing, you see here I got a little on off button. Right now it's on on. That's the one that turn on or off these uh, connectors down here. In this video, I'm going to connect uh, a couple of lights to the uh, M84. So I have uh, two uh, different types of lights here. Uh, the first one here, this is a uh, Fala 180110. So this is uh, three uh, lamps, LED lamps or lattice masks, as you can see, some pretty tall ones here uh, that I have purchased. If we uh, look at this one here and say what it says, uh, what do we have it in English? Oh, here in English, you see they need a 12 volt uh, DC. So I can connect those uh, to uh, this one. So I'm going to connect these uh, to the M84 to be able to turn on and off. Uh, in addition to that, I got this uh, Feastman here, uh, 5080, which is basically uh, a clock. Uh, that uh, can be lit, so it, it will actually have a white surface or a lit surface. Uh, if we look at this one here, let me see where does it say, oh, down here. Uh, you can see this one we can power in many different ways. So I can use 10 to 16 volt AC, or I can use uh, 14 to 24 volt uh, DC, or I can use 13 to 24 volt if it's a digital signal. So. I can actually use AC power, DC power, and I can also just directly connect it up to the uh, track power as well. So what is important uh, when you have lights is always to make sure you stay within the ranges uh, that are specified, uh, because even uh, if it's uh, LEDs uh, like these uh, masts are, um, they last a long time, but if you are beyond the specs, uh, you could run into trouble, okay? So in essence, what I want to do here is if I have my uh, M84 here, I want to connect them up 
so I can connect the Fala mast uh, to let's say connector one, and then I can connect the clock to connector two, and then I can have one power source here on connector one and another one uh, on uh, connector two. Now, what type of power can I run through these? Um, well, in essence, you can use uh, 12 to 18 volts uh, AC or DC uh, as you see fit. And each connector here can actually uh, uh, take a current of uh, 5 amps as well. So whenever you're connecting this up to lights and so on, you need to make sure you stay within those specs such that you don't harm your M84. Before we start the installation, uh, do remember, always do this with power off, so no power to the track or no power to the device itself. Also, uh, don't forget to read the manual and relevant uh, safety instructions as well. So, uh, what's the first thing we want to do? Well, I'm not going to use uh, the, um, the hobby signals down here. That means this uh, on-off switch up here, I actually want to turn it uh, off. Um, why do I want to do that? Because as far as I understand, if it's turned on, then even though there's nothing connected to these connectors, it will actually uh, use more power. So how do we do this? Well, you can see here, it's basically just a slider. So I basically just push it and you see now it's on off here instead. So I can push it back here. Well, can I? So if I push it back like this, you see now it's on on over there and I basically just want to push it over to off. So that's the first thing I want to do. The next thing I want to do is actually set the uh, address. So I want to change the dip switch here. How do we do that? Well, we uh, take our manual. So here our trusted manual. So the 60842 manual, we uh, go and we find the address settings in here. Let's see, address settings. Here it is, but that was in German. Okay, okay. So we have the table here, and there should be one also. Oh, here. Here you see an overview of the address settings, and what's worth noting is number 10 here uh, decides whether or not it's a uh, Macklin Motorola or DCC. If it's on off, it's a uh, Macklin. If it's on on, then it's a uh, uh, DCC. And how does the dip switch work? Well, everything, uh, when the, the switches are towards the numbers, that means they are off. You can also see it says on in the other end here. And when they're uh, away from the numbers, that means they're on, okay? And then the other thing I wanna do is I wanna go and look at the address table. We have that over here. So you can see, you can set individual addresses. Notice they are always uh, in combinations of four. That's because if we look at the device, there are four connectors. So you see one, two, three, four connectors on there. So by default, uh, the M84 takes up four addresses. Okay, so what address do I want to give it? Well, how about I give it here nine through 12? So in order to do 9 through 12, you see you go down, find the address you don't you want. And in essence, what you're telling the decoder is the address of the first connector. And then the other connectors will have the sequential ones. So I want address 9 to 12. And then I basically just go over to the uh, left. And here you see the dip switches. It basically says uh, number one needs to be on. That's a one there, so it means on. Number two it needs to be on. So I need one and two on in order to set it to address nine. So if we look at it now, they're actually all on right now. So I want to change that. Can you see what I'm doing now? So I'm just going to push them all down one by one. Can I hit them here? You see, I'm slowly changing them all. Okay, so now they're all off. You see that? They're all off. And now I want to set it to the address. So I wanted number one to be on. So I click that one on. I wanted number two to be on. So now we are on address nine. 
And then I want the last one here, number 10. I want that one to be, oh, sorry, I wanted it to be off to be Motorola. Oh, sorry. Can I get it? Maybe I cannot. Here it is. So this is address 9 in the Macklin Motorola. Now, if I was uh, uh, setting this up for the Central Station 3, I would put in a blank address instead. How do I do that? Well, I basically turn them all to off. So if I turn them all to off, which was actually also the setting I had before. So if I turn it all to off like this, this is basically a blank address. And when then when you use the Central Station 3, it will automatically assign it an address. However, I want it to be address 9 because I'm going to start with the uh, mobile station 2. So I'm going to set number 1 and 2 to on. Most excellent. In order to uh, connect it to the track, uh, what do I want to do? Well, I want a red and a brown cable. So in order to do that, I basically just use uh, the standard Macklin cables here. So the brown 7102 and the red 7105. I'm going to use those. And then I'm going to use the uh, spade connectors here so I can connect it to the C track. Um, that means I basically get two cables like this. Okay. So here I have my brown cable. You see in uh, one end, I basically just have it twisted. So uh, the end that goes into the um, M84, uh, you just need to twist the wire there. In the other end, you actually connect the spade connector. So in this case here, I've added it to the wire and I soldered it in place. Do uh, uh, consider soldering it in place because then for sure it will have a better connection. Now, uh, I'm doing this because I'm doing it on my temporary setup. If you're doing it on a permanent setup, consider soldering the wire directly to the track. So, what do I need to do? Well, I need to, this is the brown wire we have here. We see the brown dot is there. We basically just push it in here and hold it. And then we take a screwdriver. I got a screwdriver here. And then we are basically just going to screw it in. Or tighten the screw. Okay. You pull it, make sure it's there. I got a red one as well here. You see there's a spade connector on one end. And I basically just twisted it in the other end. I also just uh, put that to the power. I want it over here with the two power connectors. So I want it next to the brown. So I basically just put that one in as well. Okay. And then we tighten the screw here as well. All right. How do I want to connect it to the track? Well, if I have the track here, don't forget when we uh, have the track, there's a B and there's a zero. The B is the one closest to the track edge and the zero is the one furthest away. So the B is actually the red. So that's the center of the track and the zero is the brown. So in order to connect it, let me just move it a little closer. I have here my red spade connector. Uh, you see it kind of has um, a flat side and a non-flat side. The flat side here uh, goes down towards the track like this and we connect it so red on the B and then we connect the brown on the zero and we connect it in the same way. See the flat we go down towards the track. All right so it's connected like this and then we basically got it connected. Now let's uh, plug the um, lights into uh, the uh, M84. So here I have the uh, Feller lights from before. So you can see here is uh, the light, uh, the mast, and at the bottom of the mast we got two wires. We got a, a black wire and a red wire, which needs to go into a 12 volt uh, DC. I got my uh, power supply here, and you can see over here I got uh, black and red as well. So if I plug these wires into there, it will actually turn on. However, 
now I would like the M84 to actually decide when the light is turned on. Uh, in order to do that, I basically just insert the M84 in the uh, circuit in between the, uh, the uh, light and the power supply. And you can either take the uh, black from the power supply and go into the uh, M84 or the red into the uh, power supply uh, or from the power supply into the M84. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is you do it the same on both connectors, red and green on the M84 here, right? So what am I going to do? I'm going to take a piece of wire here. I got a red wire here. I got my power supply here. I'm basically just going to connect this into the power supply. Okay, so I got my red wire here and now I'm going to going to yeah, I'm going to pull a little in this wire. I'm going to put that into the center here. So you see, I'm going to put it into the center of the first connector. So I'm going to put the red into the center. Oh, you need to make sure it's twisted properly. I put it into the center here. Okay. Oh, not having much success today. I can feel it's in the center now. And then I need my screwdriver. I put that in here. Okay. I tug it to make sure it's tight. Yes, it is. Now I take my mast here and then I take my light and then I take the red from the light here and I put that into, so you can see this red here, this very, very thin wire. So it's a very, very thin wire. I don't hope you can see it. So here it is. I plug that into the red on connector one here. And it's important since I took red from the power supply, it's red. I also connect to the uh, M84. Okay. I give it a tug, make sure it's there. Okay. Now I got another light over here and I'm going to connect that to the green on the uh, M84. Again, I find the uh, red wire here and it's the red wire I'm going to connect to the M84. So now I got the red from the power supply to the center and I got the first uh, light over here on the red and now I'm going to connect the second light over here to the green. Okay. And I'm going to tighten the screw. All right. And now I have the two blacks here from the light or from the masts. I got those here. I'm basically just going to plug them into the power supply. So I got the power supply here and I'm basically just going to, yeah, let me just twist these together. All right. And then I can plug them into my power supply. So I got my power supply here. I didn't succeed in twisting them together, I see. Okay. And they're connected. Okay, so what do I have? If I look at the power supply, there's a red wire that goes into the M84 in the center. And then I have a light mast one and light mast two on red and green. And by the way, you don't need to use one connector per light. If you have a whole group of lights, you could connect them all to uh, red one, for example, and another group to uh, green uh, over here. Then we have the red that goes, in this case here, it's the uh, red that goes from the green one. So this red here goes into this light here. And then we have the black that goes all the way over and back into the power supply. All right. So as you saw before, I connected uh, my uh, Fala lights here to this power supply. This is actually a 12 volt DC power supply. Now we have um, my uh, clock here. I want to light that one as well. 
you see it's got a, a brown and a yellow wire. I want to power this one using, uh, so this is a Feastman clock. I'm going to use the Feastman uh, um, power supply for this. And we have that one here. So I'm just going to pull it in. That one is actually a 16 volt uh, AC power supply. So now I'm going to illustrate that I can use on connector one, one power supply, and I can use a completely different uh, power supply on the uh, other connector, even where the first one is DC and the second one is AC. So in order to do this, if I uh, had the clock here and you see there's a brown, here we got a brown and a yellow wire. If I connect those directly to the brown and the yellow connectors and the power supply, they will actually light up. However, I want the MND3 in between. Again, it doesn't matter if I take the uh, yellow and go to the M84 and connect the yellow from the, uh, the lamp, or in this case, the clock uh, to the uh, M84, or it's the black. It just has to be consistent. So in this case, I'm going to choose and I'm going to take here. I got a yellow wire. I'm going to connect that here to the yellow on the uh, power supply. OK, so that's connected here to the power supply. And then I'm going to connect that to the second connector here on my M84. And I'm going to put that into the center of the second connector. And then I'm going to tighten the screw here. OK, so now we have the power supply connected to the center of the connector. OK, I have my clock here. I'm going to take the yellow here, yellow here, and I'm going to, whoa, yeah, I got lots of wires now. I'm going to connect that to the green on the second, which means it's to the right here of the connector. So I'm going to connect it here and I'm going to tighten the screw. Okay. And then we have our clock here. There's still a brown wire here. I need to connect that one to actually the brown on the power supply. All right. So I have uh, rearranged everything so it's a little easier to see. So what you see here is the 12 volt uh, DC power supply down here. It goes over to the uh, two uh, Fala light mast we have here. They are connected here to uh, connector one. Uh, the one uh, light mast here furthest to the uh, left is connected to the leftmost connector. The light mast here to the right is connected to the rightmost. So this is 12 volt DC uh, circuitry over here with uh, the matching power supply. I have over here all the yellow and brown cables. I have the clock. The clock is connected to connector two on the green. This is actually 16 volt uh, AC I have connected to here because that is uh, one of the possibilities that was for the clock. All right. In addition to that, I have connected the uh, M84 to the track using the uh, red and the brown wire. I have um, started up my uh, central station here. And uh, you, if you notice, it's actually in uh, stop mode. Um, now uh, let's try and take it out of stop mode and see what happens. So I'm going to hit the stop, but I'm going to do this off camera. So I'm going to hit the stop mode now. And you see, as soon as the stop mode goes on, uh, one of the lights actually turns on. Now, why is that? Well, that's because if you look at it, you can barely see there's a red reflection here. But connector one is actually set to red. Remember connector one, I connected something both to the red and to the green. So there will something be connected to both of them. OK, so how do I change uh, these things here? Well, I go into my accessories. So I pass the accessory up here. So that's the turnout. That's my accessories. It changes over to keyboard. And then we have to remember what address was it actually we set it for. Well, it was address 9 through 12. Uh, remember up here at the top, you can uh, go address one address up at a time. If you want to change addresses fast, you hit shift 
and then you turn the knob here and then you can see it jumps. However, this was 9 and 10, so now I'm on or 9, 10, 11, 12. So I want to show 9 and 10 and you can see here the uh, Mobile Station 2 shows it as red, red, which is also what we can see down here on the uh, on the uh, M84. You can see the red is on on connector 1 and the red is on on connector 2. And that's because address 9 is connector 1 and address 10 is connector 2. Okay, now what happens uh, if I change it? Remember the way to change it, if I want to change address 9 over here to the uh, left, then I use the left buttons here. So the, this one here right outside the red is uh, for red and the one below is for green. You see then it's outside the green here. Uh, by the way, I noticed it seems to be speaking uh, German to me. I think I forgot to put it into English. Um, so I'm going to click on the green down here and see what happens. So I'm going to click on it now. And then you see that it actually changed to the other light. If we look at the uh, M84, you can now see that it's actually the green here that's lit on connector one. And in that fashion, I can change between red and green, and then I can change between the two lights here. All right. Now on uh, the next connector, which is connector two, which right now you can see is red uh, down here, it's red. Uh, that's where I put the clock. Um, so that's over here, that's red. But however, I put the clock on the green. So let me try and turn on the green and see what happens. I'll actually move the clock a little closer here so we can see. So I'm going to press the green now. And you see it actually turned on. And now we have light in the clock as well. And uh, if I can hold them both here, well, not easy. Maybe I can do it like this. So now I'm going to hit the red, you see it turns off, I hit the green, it turns on, and I hit the red, and then it turns off. Excellent. So what have I actually done now? I've actually managed to put two different uh, power uh, supplies or power sources on two different connectors, and I'm able to light uh, both some Fala lights that uses 12 volt DC, and in this case, a uh, Feastman uh, clock that actually uses 16 volt AC. So you saw before that um, I have the Fala lights connected uh, both to connector one um, and it's either one light or the other light that's uh, on. Uh, so it's either red or green. Could I change this behavior? Yes, as a matter of fact, I can. So if we uh, look at the manual here, so we take the manual and we look in the manual and uh, we look here. Uh, inside the English manual, you can see there's some preset modes here on CV79. So uh, the uh, standard mode is the mode we are in, where actually the decoder occupied uh, FIA addresses, and uh, it actually works in, in a switching mode. However, there's other modes over here. I'll let you experiment with them, but for example, you see mode 3 and 4 has some blinking and random, and mode 4 has some random building lighting. However, I would like to just be able to switch them on and off independently. In order to do that, I'm going to uh, select mode 2. So mode 2 means that there will be 8 independent switches, and it will occupy 8 addresses. And um, what do I do to do that? Well, uh, you actually have to turn it into DCC mode because if it's in DCC mode, it's actually easier uh, to change the CV address. So how do we do that? Well, we have my uh, central station here. So I hit stop and you can also see the light went out down there. Most excellent. Now I'm going to take my yeah, let's see. I'm going to pull all the wires here. I'm going to look at my dip switch here again. And remember the last one here, number 10, was whether or not it had to be Motorola or DCC. So I'm going, going to push that one up. Uh, can I get it there? So now you see it's pushed up. So now it's address 10 in DCC mode. Okay. I'm 
going out of stop mode again. Now we have the M84 in DCC mode. Now I can go in and create a temporary locomotive to actually change the CV79. How do I do that? Well, first I go over to uh, locomotives. I hit the locomotive button. I see I'm already on a locomotive, so I keep hitting the locomotive button till I find a free spot. Um, and we have one here, there's no locomotive. So now I can hit uh, shift and locomotive. And then I can, you can see it goes into a new locomotive uh, menu and it only does that if there's no locomotive uh, on forehand. I can use the buttons over here to scroll up and down. And I'm gonna, I want to uh, enter manually and I use these buttons over here to choose. So the top one from database and the uh, bottom one is enter manually. I want enter manually. I scroll down and I choose DCC. Uh, remember what the address of was of the M84. Again, here the address I can choose by using these buttons. I can also use shift and the knob to jump. The address was number nine. So I go in and hit nine. And then you see there's a check mark here. That's this button over here. I click this one. I don't care about the name. So I just click the check mark. I don't really care about which uh, symbol it has. So I just, uh, well, I'll just select one and then hit the check mark. Excellent. And now we have one here. And now what I can do is I can go into shift locomotive for this one. I can hit program CV here. And then we can, again, we can scroll till we find the appropriate number with these uh, buttons here next to the plus and minus. But I can also uh, use the shift and the um, knob, and I was lucky, I ended up at 79. I hit the check mark here, and then you saw it actually uh, read the, uh, the um, CV value, and you can see the CV value currently is zero. Now, I wanted to change that to two, so I hit plus, plus, and now it's two. I hit the check mark. It's gonna reprogram the decoder, yeah, I don't know if you heard it, but something actually happened. I can try again. If I hit uh, the check mark here, it reads it. If I go back to zero, and now I'm going to hit the check mark off screen. And if you uh, look at it, it will actually blink. You see it stopped blinking over here. Uh, by the way, notice that uh, the red and green are gone as well. So you can see there's actually something happening on the device. I hit the check mark again, I go back, I want two, I hit check mark, and that's good. So now we have uh, set it for mode two, which was eight individual addresses. I hit stop again, so now I'm in stop mode. Actually, let me just go all the way out of this. You see, now I'm in stop mode, okay? Now we can take the uh, M84 again, we go to the last dip switch here. I hope you can see it. So dip switch zero. Yeah, it's here. Maybe that's the easiest way to see it. And then I'm just gonna click that back into Macklin Motorola mode. Yes, it's there now. You see, it's only one and two that are set. We uh, put it down again. So now the uh, M84 is set to uh, mode two instead. All right, so um, I uh, take it out of stop mode. You see no light turns on. I want to go to the uh, turnouts or the accessories. So I hit uh, the turnout button. Um, so now what is the case here? Well, I have eight addresses now. Remember, I have on my M84, I got on connector one, a red and a green, connector two, a red and a green. So I got four pairs of red and green. Now the way it works is the first connector on the red becomes number nine. The first green uh, on connector one becomes number 10. The red on number two uh, becomes number 11 and so on. So basically you can just count the connectors down here, right? So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and so on, right? So now I have a completely different set of addresses. 
And the case here is that when it's red, it's actually turned off. And when it's green, it's actually turned on. And notice I actually got it into uh, English now. So now I'm going to hit green uh, off camera uh, uh, on no address 9 here. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to hit green now. And you see one of them actually went on. Um, and it looks like when I set it up again, I shifted these two. Uh, so let me just put them around here. So it's actually the one, the connector here. You see, you can also see it here on the M84. Maybe you can barely see it on the video. The red light here is on over here. Now, if we look at the uh, mobile station, I can also put address 10 in green. So if I put that in green, you see the other light goes on. So where before I was in uh, mode zero, I had to have either red on or green on. Now I can actually choose. And that also means that if I go on, I go to address 11 here and then I turn. Well, actually, address 11 is the red. OK, address 12 is actually the green on two where I have connected my clock. So let me try this one here. So, <laughs> so here we have the clock. And here I have, yeah, it must be uh, 9, 10, uh, 12 here. So, uh, yeah, here. So uh, if, if the um, mobile station 2 might not actually show the state that actually the M84 has uh, first time you go into it, and that's the case you saw here. So now you see it's green, and now you see the clock turns on. If I hit red, you see the clock face turning off. Right, so here's green and here's red. So if I'm in CV79 uh, mode two, I can actually control all of my ports individually. The uh, CV79 to change the modes, uh, unfortunately only exist in the uh, black edition of the M84. So the 60842. Uh, if you have the white edition, which is the 60841, then you will actually have to change uh, the uh, uh, switch groups individually. How do you do that? Well, you do um, the same thing as before, where you uh, went into DCC mode, you create a locomotive as well, a temporary locomotive, and then you change the addresses you see on the screen here. Uh, so you need to change the CV33 to 8, that will actually tell the uh, M84 that you need to use uh, eight addresses instead of four addresses. Now, I don't have a white uh, M84. Um, however, if I only change the CV33 to eight, then my uh, black edition actually will automatically work as expected. However, um, I suspect that the uh, white edition will not. So in order to make sure, you need to actually disconnect each of the switch groups uh, in the M84. You do that by going in for each connector and uh, setting the switch group to zero. So for connector one, you need to set CV136 to zero and CV137 to zero and so on. So you, I would recommend that you go in and set all of these CVs to zero, basically from CV 136 to CV uh, 143. In that fashion, uh, the um, white edition of the M84 should now work as, uh, as expected, basically with independent lights. Now let's uh, do the same thing uh, with the uh, Central Station 3 with the uh, black edition of the uh, M84, so the 60842. So in essence, what we basically need to do is just to search for the MFX device. So uh, here I have the uh, Central Station 3 uh, started up. Uh, and as you can see, it's in uh, stop mode. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to go uh, out of stop mode. Um, then I want to pull down the green tab here at the top. I'm going to pull it down so I can see my uh, accessories list. Uh, remember now what I wanted to do is I want to look for my uh, M84 decoder. So this is the uh, uh, M84, the black edition that's MFX enabled. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to hit edit. Then I'm going to click on the uh, discover MFX items here in the menu. 
uh, here I have the choice between uh, get a new address and keep its address. Now remember we set the address to uh, blank. Uh, when it's blank, uh, I uh, prefer to use a uh, get a new address. You could also have planned an address and click keep its address. However, the benefit with get a new address is that the central station tree will actually make sure that it will make an address or give the M84 an address uh, where there is nothing else allocated already. Okay, so we are gonna hit the uh, OK button. The uh, central station uh, tree is going out and looking for MFX items, and you can see it actually already found one. It's uh, looking for what kind of uh, MFX item uh, this is, and you can see it's reading something. You briefly saw there that it said M84, so it's an M84. Uh, decoder and you can see something already appeared uh, in the accessories list. We are waiting patiently. It's checking if there's additional ones there. It says it found one MFX decoder. All right, so now I already have my uh, um, MFX uh, items here, uh, A1 through A4, and that's actually a uh, all the ports that are on the, um, or those are the connectors that are on the M84. So now we can start playing with it. Now uh, let's look at the, the M84 here on the uh, table again. Uh, and as we see, uh, there's no lights right now. If we look at the central station tree, uh, all of the uh, switches are also on uh, off. However, do remember we would expect that at least uh, connection one, uh, depending on whether or not it's on red or green, would show something. However, uh, this is just a newly attached uh, M84, so it actually doesn't show anything. But what we can do is we can go here to the accessories list and we can click on it. So let's see what happens when we click on A1. And you see uh, the light actually turned on. So this is actually the green connector. So this is the Fala lightning light mast uh, on the green connector or on the green on connector one. If we turn it to red, and indeed we see that it's uh, the other light now that's on. So in this uh, fashion, when I change it, so I go to green, I go to red, you can see it changes. I can also go over to the uh, second one, so A2, and here I can click on this one here, and then you see the green activated, and we look at the clock. Indeed, it's lit, so we can see that, and I can turn that off again. However, now um, we see that the uh, lights here on A1, I either have them uh, one on or the other one of the Fala light mast here. I would actually like to be able to uh, control all of this independently. So how would I do that? Well, if we go into edit, edit article list, then we can actually see uh, that I have my M84 in here. Um, and I can click on the uh, M84 and then I can go down to the very lower right hand corner where you see there's a little triangle here, I can click on this one. And when we click on this one, we get into the settings for the M84. I want to go into configuration. We wait while the uh, central station tree is actually reading the configuration from the uh, M84. So first it read the uh, fundamental decoder information and now it's reading the configuration. So we can go in here in the configuration and indeed down here we find the uh, CV79 that we can change. This one here I can click on. Um, so contrary to the uh, uh, mobile station 2 where it was hard to actually change this, I actually have directly here a drop down menu where you can see all the different modes I can choose from. And if you noticed, I believe there's even a little more modes here than there was uh, documented in the manual. So perhaps it's been updated. However, now I want eight switches across eight addresses. So I click on that here. And then now you saw something just happened up here where it said configuration. It's actually already sent to the M84 and it's already been reconfigured. So we close this. However, 
Now you see, I still got A1 through A4 here. So it still thinks, or the central station, despite we uh, changed it through the central station, still think there's only uh, um, four addresses out there and there's a switch on each of them. So what I have found is the easiest way to actually uh, get the central station to realize what's out there is I delete my M84, so I click the little X up here. Yes, I want to delete decoder A, okay? And then I go out of edit accessories, and then I go into edit, and then I discover it again. I give it a new address, because now remember, before it was taking four addresses, now I had changed the mode and it's gonna take eight addresses, so the same space may not work, so I let the central station find a suitable space to give it an address. We wait for it here. It's looking for it again. It actually found one, it said. All right, we are patient. It found an M84, excellent, cool. And we see now there's a lot more accessories popping up. We're still patient, it's looking for more, it says it found one MFX, excellent. All right, so now we try these ones. So remember now, the A1 is the red on connector one. Let's try out that one. I click on it so it turns green. Indeed, the light turns on. I click on it so it turns red. And indeed, it turns off. I do the same thing with the next one green and we see now it's the other light mask that actually turned on so a1 here is connector one red a2 is connector one green and why how do i know this well if you look at the physical orientation of the m84 it's basically the um all the uh, the addresses goes from uh, left through right and for every place you can put something that can be turned on it's an additional address. So in this case, there's four connectors, each with two, so that's eight addresses. In the same fashion, I can also turn on my clock. And now we see the clock has turned on as well. Oh, sorry, this is not the right one. You see nothing happens here because number three is actually red on connector two. We have to go to address to the fourth address here, A4, so I click on that one. Indeed, now we see the clock turns on, and I have achieved my goal. So as you can see, it's a lot easier to actually reconfigure uh, the M84 using the central station tree, and please go ahead and try some of the other modes as well. Some of them are interesting. Now, uh, what do we do with the uh, 60841, so the uh, M84 that does not have MFX? Unfortunately, I do not have one of those. Uh, so what I've done is I've um, connected uh, the um, uh, 60842 to the central station uh, tree, but disabled MFX. In this way, I can illustrate to you what you need to do in order to uh, add the uh, 60841. So that is the white M84 decoder. So since it doesn't have MFX, I can't go ahead and just discover it. So what I have to do is I actually have to add it manually. How do I do that? Well, up in my edit menu, don't forget I find this edit menu by pulling down the green tab. I already did that here. I can go and click edit. I can click edit article list. Um, when it's the uh, 60841, so the white M84, don't forget you have to set the address. So the address for this one here is set to uh, address 9 to 12. Please go ahead and make sure to double check your manual how you do that as well. Uh, for the uh, 60842, it's actually pin 1 and pin 2 that needs to be uh, on on and the rest on off. But double check it with the 60841 manual. So, uh, what do I need to do? Well, I need to uh, 
uh, add it manually. So I hit a plus. And um, the first thing we see here is, well, it actually comes up with the right symbol. However, don't forget down here with all the tabs, you can uh, assign it the right symbol. So here you got common, light, turnouts, light signals, semaphores, and miscellaneous. You go under common, and here you can actually find the uh, K84. So for example, if it was on the left turnout, you can hit K84. And then you need to remember down here at the bottom to set the address. So you see now it got address 8. I don't want that. I actually want address 9. Um, so I'm going to choose that. And now you see it has address 9. Now I create three more of the same kind. Um, so I basically just hit uh, one more here. It assigned it to number 8 again because that's the first space. I want this one to be number 10. It turned out to be X2 and it has the same. That's good. I hit one more so that X3. I want that address to be 11. And then the last one here, X4. I want that address to be 12. So now I actually already have uh, what I need here. However, um, let's, uh, let's go and see how they work. So I hit OK here. And now I can click on my X1, which should be a connector 1 on my M84. So let me try that. You see, when it turns green, it's actually uh, the mast on the green connector, on the green on connector 1 that turns on. If I click on the red, then indeed it is the other mast. And in the same fashion, when I click the X2, which is the second connector, then you actually see that the clock turns on and off. So this actually works exactly as we want it to. Now, uh, how do we uh, make the uh, lights uh, independent on the uh, 60841? So that is the white edition of the uh, M84 decoder. Um, remember, I still got here the uh, 60842, so the black edition. However, I have disabled MFX. Uh, on my central station tree such that it will actually work uh, like the white edition. However, um, on the uh, black edition, remember I could change the uh, CV79 and then I could uh, in essence uh, change the mode, uh, which made it really easy to go uh, to something where each uh, connection is independent and I can make the light independent. What do I do on the white edition? Well, since I don't have MFX, I can't program it with that. However, I can program it with the um, DCC. Uh, so I can go into DCC mode and then change the programming. It's not CV79, but it's some other CVs. In order to do that, I need to do uh, two things. I need to make sure my M84 is in DCC mode, and then I need to uh, make sure that I'm actually connected to the programming track on my uh, central station tree. And why is that? Because it's only on the central, uh, on the programming track, sorry, uh, where you can read the CV values. And it just makes it a lot easier. So let's first uh, go to the uh, programming track on the central station tree. So I got my central station tree here. If we uh, look at the back, you can see the power right now is connected here to the uh, or the power to the track, which is the green here is connected now uh, to the plug right next to the power. If you turn it around, I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually a track and there's a track here on the other one as well. And it says prog, but it's upside down. So that's the programming track. Um, you need to make sure that you are in stop mode. You can see it's red here, so I'm in stop mode. So now I can uh, gently uh, pull this plug here. Don't pull the cable, by the way. Um, and now I can insert it here into the one next to it. All right. I am still in stop mode. I'm going to put my central station away. Uh, however, I would also like to make sure that my M84 is in DCC mode. How was it I did that? Well, remember, when we have the dip switch, the last uh, dip switch here, so number 10, or sometimes also called zero, 
I think it says zero here, yes, uh, is actually uh, whether or not it's a uh, Macklin Motorola or DCC. I need to push this one up. So I got it like this. So now you see I got the two first, so one and two here uh, on, and I got the last on. So now we need to find it on DCC address nine. Okay. So uh, we are back on the uh, central station tree. So now I want to actually uh, get to the uh, um, M84, so the white uh, M84 using DCC. So uh, in order to do that, we go back into edit, edit article list. I'm just going to use the one I created before. So this is the uh, X1 we had from before. You see down here at the bottom, it's still at address nine. However, now we want it to be DCC. So we change it uh, to uh, DCC mode. Uh, so now the first one here is actually DCC. Um, let me just, uh, well, here. So it's NDCC. So now I can go and configure it. In order to configure it, I go here in the lower right hand corner with the triangle. I click on this one. And remember, even though uh, where I had MFX, I had a um, an indication of the M84 in the accessories. Here I'm just going to the first one. But the M84 is programmed such that the first address is also the one you alter the configuration. So I can go in, I can um, alter the configuration in here. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot to take it out of stop mode. We hit close again. I go out. We do remember here to take it out of stop mode. Okay. I say edit. Uh, edit article list again. I go into my configuration using a little triangle. I go into configuration. Now you can actually see that it's reading uh, from the M84. So when you go into the configuration, there are some default addresses. It will always show and you can see those here. However, we need to go to some more interesting addresses. So what we can do is use the burger menu up here, uh, which is the three parallel lines. We click on this one here, and then we can choose the load CV template. When we do this, we can go in and then we can basically find uh, the 60841 uh, and you see it's actually here. So we select this one, we hit OK. And now you see up here in the configuration, it's reading in all the variables. Uh, you can actually go ahead now already and alter the variables. However, let's just be patient and uh, wait till it reads it all in. And you can see there's still 20 left. If you go down, you can see how far it is. You can basically see here with the OK as it reads in the variables. So this makes it very, very easy. However, do remember this only works if you're on the programming track. Okay, so we are got five more to go. We are almost at the end. It's reading the last variables. And here it is. Now here we can go and uh, change all the variables. Unfortunately, everything here is in German here. Um, I, uh, that's, that's unfortunately how it is. However, what do we need to do? Well, we want to change them so they become independent. There's two things we need to do. The first one is change it such that instead of four addresses, we use eight addresses. And the other thing is to make sure that they are absolutely disconnected. In order to change it from four to eight, that's the CV38 we see here. You see it says four now. You basically just go in and then you change that to eight. So now it's, and you can see it's already writing uh, here. Uh, so now it's writing it. Oh, it said there's something wrong. Um, let me try one more time. Let me just try here and say four. It's okay. I'll go back to eight. It's okay. Yeah, I think it's happy. I think it's because I hit the increment here. When you hit the increment, the central station tree will actually immediately go ahead and, and uh, send it. So if you set several increments in a row, I think it might confuse the system. Uh, however, now we got that on eight. So now we changed it from four to eight addresses. 
Um, however, we also need to make sure they're separated. So I don't know how the uh, white M84 reacts, but when I have the black M84, uh, I basically only need to do that and they automatically get separated. I suspect that the white one, so the 60841, will need additional, but you'll have to try this out. So if we scroll further down, you can see there is here 136, it says road one Schaltgruppe, and it says something here. That actually connects the red one to some of the other connections. Uh, so if I change this to a zero, then you see now nothing is chosen out here. So now uh, they are not connected. I can scroll down further. Oh, oops, I have to scroll the right way. Here we got the green one, okay? You can also click over here. Notice I changed the number before. You can also click over here and you see now it becomes black and I can remove this one and you see it gets removed, okay? We go down to the uh, red two. I can remove that one. I go down to the green two. I can remove that one. I go down to the red tree. I can remove that one. The green tree, I can remove that one. And then we have the uh, red four. I can remove that one. And then we have the green four and we can remove that one. And just to be sure, we just verify that they all say okay here. Uh, you notice they will say okay when it's been written properly to it. So that actually means now that the uh, um, M84, so the white M84, now has split everything and we've gone into eight addresses. So uh, the next thing we need to do is actually uh, to uh, change the dip switch back um, and we need to move uh, the power again. Okay, so now we need to get it back into uh, Macklin Motorola mode and we need to change it back uh, to the uh, main track instead of the programming track. So uh, let's do that. Um, I'll zoom out a little here again. We have our central station tree. Make sure it's in stop mode. We look at the back. We see the power now is in the programming track. So the black connector, we need to get it into the green. So we connect it there. Okay. Uh, by the way, remember when you're on the programming track, it should be the only device on the programming track. Okay. So that's our central station tree. We take our M84 and we put it into Motorola mode. So basically just the last dip switch again. We uh, change that one and now we're happy. All right, so we are back at the uh, central station uh, tree. Um, again, we remember to go out of stop mode. Uh, we go into edit, edit article list. Um, Remember the X1 here, we left it in DCC mode. We changed it back to Macklin Motorola mode. We make sure that it's actually address nine. Okay, so it's address nine. So now we got X1 through X4. However, now we got uh, eight addresses. So we create some more. We need an X5, X6, X7, X8. Okay, so number four here is 12. That means number five needs to be 13, address 13. Number six uh, needs to be, uh, yeah, now it's getting confused because the addresses are on top of each other. So number six needs to be 14. Um, yes, I'm sure I want to do that. And number seven is 15 and number eight is 16. Let's just uh, check that they're all okay. So X8 is 16. Uh, you can also see it's already uh, changing on the uh, M84 as I do this. Okay, so now they're all independent. We take the X1 and we can see we can turn the, the light on and off. And we take the uh, X2 and do the same. So now these two are actually uh, completely independent. And uh, as uh, before, uh, when we had it split, uh, the X4 will be the clock. 
Most excellent. Now let's look a little at the troubleshooting. If you notice here behind uh, each of the connectors, there are actually some LEDs and they're very, very good for troubleshooting. So if you notice over here behind the, where you add the power, we have to have the red to the left and the brown to the right. If you notice down here on the wires, I have actually reversed that. So now I have mounted this one wrong. Um, and this is where the troubleshooting LEDs can help us. So let me just try and turn it on. So I'm going to take it out of stop mode now. And what happened? Well, it immediately, uh, you could hear it said some kind of sound and then it actually started blinking very angrily. So it was not happy about being connected like that. It was very angry. So we have to switch the wires. Let me just uh, quickly do that. So I'll switch the wires here. And remember only to do this with the power off. I actually have it in stop mode, so we are all okay. So we take the wires out and we shift them back. Mm -hmm. Not able to hit the hole here, I see. Okay. So we put the brown back where the brown belongs. And we put the red back where the red belongs, which is to the left and the brown to the right. And now you see I have reversed the uh, cables and actually connected them correctly. So if you look at the red cable here, it's to the left where the red dot is to the left. I have the brown cable down here to the right and the brown dot to the right. So now we can actually turn on the power again and see if everything works. And what you see now is uh, instead of angry blinking, we get a happy blinking. So the M84 is basically just blinking happily and saying, yes, I'm ready to do something. Now, the interesting part is all the other LEDs here. Let me just see if I can hold it differently. So if we go here to connector one, and if I try to use connector one, so then you can see it actually also shows us right now uh, the red one is turned on, uh, green one is turned on, I got red one turned off, and I got green one turned off. Similarly, I can go over to uh, where I had the clock, which was on the green two, and you can see I can turn that one on. And even if I carry on further down the line, and if I go over here on the four red, you can see I can even test it without having anything actually connected. So this makes it really, really nice. The last thing that's interesting is, if you notice over here, you have the happily blinking lamp, and then to the, uh, to the right of that, you have another lamp. If you notice here, when I go and uh, uh, connect or turn the uh, green on connector four on, see the green on connector four turns green, but notice the red right next to the uh, happily blinking LED. It's also shortly blinking. So what's really, really nice is that Whenever you access the device, it will actually show you that it's being accessed. So in this way, even if these LEDs uh, were not working, you could see here that you are trying to access it. This can be very handy when you're programming it and you're a little unsure if something is actually happening. You can look at the LEDs and see, indeed, I am programming it right now. So the uh, cool thing about the uh, M84 and the M83 is you can actually string them together. So if you look at the end here, you can see there's actually a connector here. There's actually one in the other end as well. So this is actually a M83, but you'll find the same on the M84. So if I have another M83 here as well, you see it has a connector. It has a connector on this side. They fit together. And basically all you need to do is click them together. And now you have a string of uh, devices here. Um, so what are the rules for being able to do this? Well, only one of the devices can be powered. I'm not sure which one it is, but on all the drawings I've seen, it's always the uh, rightmost uh, of the devices when you got a string. Uh, the other thing is 
you're not allowed to put any kind of wire or anything in between here. They need to be attached directly to each other. Um, and you can actually mix M83s, M84s, and as I understand it, even both old and, and new models. So you can mix both the black and the white of both kinds. Um, if you look at my little setup here, I still got my M84 here. You see there's a wire going in to the M84 here. I connected up a M83 here as well. Maybe I can move it a little down, then you can actually see it says M84 and M83 over here. Um, my M84 still have my two lamps and my clock here. My M83 actually has two turnouts and a turnout drive here all by itself. And uh, if I go ahead, you'll see I can actually change each of them. So you see here I changed the turnout, here I changed the... Uh, uh, turnout mechanism by itself. Here I change another turnout. I can turn on the light uh, of all of them and my clock. So the cool thing is everything works nicely together and you can actually string them together in one long string when you mount them. One thing to think about uh, with the lights is the uh, how they are powered. Is it AC or is it DC? So the two fellow ones over here, uh, as we saw uh, during the video, these are connected to a, a 12 volt DC power supply. Over here with the clock, it's actually connected to a, a 16 volt AC power supply. Now, uh, what's uh, really interesting is in real life, you don't really see it. Uh, they all uh, appear like they're stable and has a continuous light. However, see if we look at this one close up, I don't know if you can see it. It kind of looks a little like if you look at the bottom of the clock now, something is flickering a little. So this is an effect of uh, there's a slight flickering when it's uh, AC lights and that combined uh, with the videos. So when you're recording videos, for example, and if you have your entire layout powered by AC power, then you will actually see some disturbing flickering. So if you're not uh, doing any videos of your layout, don't worry about it. If it's something uh, you really uh, worry about, then consider using uh, DC. And by the way, don't forget to power each of the items or lights as uh, prescribed by the manufacturer. So the Fala here could only do 12 volt AC, uh, sorry, 12 volt DC, while actually uh, the Feastman here it uh, was specified to be able to do both AC, DC, but it also specified on there you could do use dig digital signal. What does that mean? Well, in truth, you could actually connect it directly to track power as well. So, um, but you have to make sure that everything fits together. All right, that was the uh, M84. In truth, it wasn't really that difficult. If uh, we look at the M84, you need to remember to uh, connect it to uh, track power or to some other M84 or M83s in a string. Uh, you need to uh, connect up uh, whatever you want to have lighted. So in this case, I have uh, some uh, uh, light mast here. Uh, the way you connect it is you take the power uh, or one of the wires uh, from the power supply go to the center and then the uh, uh, one of the sides, you go to, uh, to the light. Uh, and it doesn't matter in truth whether or not you use uh, the uh, red or black if it's DC or brown or yellow if it's the AC or whatever colors you have chosen to use. Um, so it's relatively easy to use. Now, uh, when would you use the M84 compared to the M83? Well, actually, there's a simple rule of thumb. The M84 is if you want continuous power and the M83 is if you want momentary power, right? So the M83 can give a momentary pulse to change a turnout, for example. However, the M84 can turn on the light continuously. In truth, you can actually uh, mix them a little. They are actually versatile devices and by advanced programming, you can actually make the M83 behave somewhat like the M84 and vice versa. However, I would, I would uh, strongly recommend 
that you use uh, them for what they are really uh, uh, built for. Um, the other thing is there's actually a power plug here. Uh, so you can actually also power uh, the uh, devices uh, externally if you wanted to. Remember this goes uh, from the track power. Uh, by the way, maybe that's another thing I forgot to say. The connectors on the M84 are not powered by the track power. The connectors on the M83 are powered by track power. However, you can also have an external uh, power supply for these devices. However, it requires a 60882, I believe. And there you connect the power supply to and you put it into the string uh, as well. So they are versatile devices. Um, in the future videos, we will look at uh, how do we uh, connect non-Maclin signals as well. Uh, so the dumb signals, remember in an entire uh, signal series, I actually used uh, the advanced signals that come with decoders, or I think I called them smart uh, signals that come with decoders and everything. Uh, however, you can also find a lot of signals, and especially if you want to make something that's a local country signal, so not a German signal. So let's say a Danish signal, a Dutch signal, an American signal, a British signal, or a signal... Uh, uh, from Belgium, for example. They don't necessarily come with decoders, but just the built-in light. You can also use the M84 uh, for that, and you can also get it to do stop track as well. Um, finally, you can also use it for when we're doing automation. So if you wanna cut track power on a, a specific uh, portion of your track, so the uh, trains don't run past that, you can use uh, this one as well. Um, one thing I'm considering making a video of, uh, if it's of interest to you, uh, so please let me know in the comments, is you can actually also do mechanical automation with that. So for example, complete mechanical automation of a shadow yard uh, or a shadow station um, by actually using the inputs up here that can control what happens with the connectors down here. So uh, if this video uh, helped you, please hit the thumbs up uh, and give it a like. Um, and do consider subscribing to the channel. And I hope to see you again. Enjoy!